Hello and welcome to Beyond the Bells, the exclusive podcast for Women's Wrestling Army, and you are watching for free on the WWA YouTube channel. My name is Alyssa Marino, pro wrestling commentator and host of Let's Get Serial. I am joined, you know him already, podcaster, host, purveyor of professional wrestling, the 17-year tenure and an anniversary coming up. Well, Washington, how are you? I am so good, and I am so happy to be here <laughs> with you, Alyssa, and and. To, to be a part of Beyond the Bells finally, and uh, I am just excited to get to talk all things Women's Wrestling Army. This is going to be exciting. This is going to be exciting because to join us for this very special kickoff episode, we have some amazing guests. The co-owners of Women's Wrestling Army, the first lady of professional wrestling, Maria Canellis bennett and ROH ring announcer, Bobby Cruz. Hello! <laughs> I, I, <laughs> Hi what, guys. what an entrance with music i love i know oh my god i haven't done a podcast with maria by the way and i want to say like well, i mean we did the little ones back in like 2020 yeah. right yeah uh -huh. and then uh uh but like formally it's been like seven years so yeah. i am just excited to be here time. with you you were fantastic back then and you've only gotten better so thank you so much for being here i appreciate it no, thank you for being here. I mean, this is this is like a really exciting time right now in women's wrestling in general. And I feel like there's never been kind of a more exciting time to kick off a new product. And uh, I feel like if there were any mind I wanted to see behind it, it would be you. And uh, and I've, I've told you this personally. This isn't just me being a, a podcaster at this point. I've directly said this to you. Um, but I feel like right now is just the right time thank you very much it's an exciting time and like i i absolutely adored um what we were able to do with ring of honor last year and there's no way that would have happened if it wasn't for my partner bobby cruz so wait this way this way there we go, <laughs> there we go. bobby cruz right over here. <laughs> Look, i Hollywood. mean you on you my street art like it's so weird <laughs> you're over here for me <laughs> well, yes, and the we'll, two of, we'll get there. We'll get there. The two of you really have been just kind of the, the dream team. You know, everyone's referred to you as the dream team. So, how did this dream team go from you know everything that transpired with Ring of Honor to then creating this new project with Women's Wrestling Army? Willow Nightingale, but Maria can tell that story. But that's really where it's <laughs> Go ahead, Maria. <laughs> so, uh. Final battle was, um, and even before final battle, but final battle was tough. It, um, cause for us, it was the final battle. We, we had no idea what was going to happen with ring of honor. And, um, Willow comes back from her match with Roxy and says, when are you guys going to start something? And I was like, don't, don't do that to me. Cause like it, it was such an emotional evening that I felt everything so very strongly. Um, and she just kept saying, you and Bobby should start something. And um, I've said this before. I didn't want to own a wrestling company. I loved my position at Ring of Honor. I, I liked being, um, being in charge of the women's division, but not being in charge of a company. Uh, but we knew that the only way that we were going to have that same kind of role was if we built something brand new. And so, um, you know, it wasn't just Willow, it was also AK and Marty and um, Roxy at the time was asking us to do something and Miranda Alizé. And so there was a group of them that were just constantly saying, you guys should do something. And um, so Bobby and I started chatting about it. And at first it was kind of like a, ah, uh, Maybe we should. I don't know. But then Brand Army had this platform um, that was streaming and there was a way that we could stream it and then have these subscribers and then also be able to profit share with the girls. And I was like, OK, there it is. There's where it feels comfortable. Um, and uh, to be able to show how many subscribers we have and then eventually be able to give a percentage to the girls. Um, that sounded like a great idea to me. And then I started my own personal brand army page and it was doing well. 
And so then Bobby and I talked about it even further. And so that was in December. So the first like talks about this was in December. And then, um, you know, we went back and forth on it and how we were going to, you know, how we were going to move forward. And then we finally settled on, um, filming on May 1st. And so, um, it was, not a terribly long process, but it felt like a very long process <laughs> um, to me. And also to Bob, like, we need to get something out there. We got to take care of our girls. We got to lead. We were very like anxious to be able to give them a platform again. So um, yeah, for us, it's very like in our soul of like helping these girls out. So um, yeah, that's kind of like the beginning of it. And keep in mind too, at this, uh, while this is all going on and we're talking to Brand Army, we're you know trying to plan putting this together. Marie and I are also worried about our own careers um, with the end of Ring of Honor and not knowing what was going to happen um, and who was going to go where. I mean, you know, Marie and I were in Dallas in the beginning of January, both on Impact at the same time, which like, um, how I looked around and like, how the hell we get here, you know? And, um, it's just, things have obviously transpired since that have, uh, made the situation better, such as Mr. Khan, uh, getting his hands on a ring of honor and getting it away from those people at, uh, <laughs> broadcast. um, so, you know, it's in much better hands now, but this was all going on at the same time, trying to figure out what, what we were going to do with our own careers, but also trying to get this going. So it was a, it was a very interesting time. Yeah, I was going to say, because, um, you know, mm -hmm. kind of while navigating all of that, Bobby, you're back on TV practically every week at this point. Yeah, it's, I can't complain. I, I'm so grateful uh, to Tony and to AEW and everyone there. Of course, there's been so many people that I worked with in the past in Ring of Honor that I've known, but just even the production people I've met for the first time and everyone has been so, so good with me. Um, and they bring me in to announce ring of honor title matches, which is most times just one match per night. And, uh, I'm blown away by that. It's, um, you know, it is a week to week thing. I wasn't on last week. I don't know if I'm on this week. It's, it's kind of like, it's a very fluid situation, I guess, at least until ring of honor gets going. And I have total faith in PK that he will have something for ring of honor. Um, so, it's uh yeah it's it's really been a, a crazy time mm -hmm. and maria with you keeping you know busy at impact wrestling bobby being you know back to being ring of honor ring announcer do you feel like it's been kind of a a benefit or a challenge to kind of balance wwa as your own independent project uh, for for me it's been um more difficult to <laughs> balance figuring out how a new promotion starts. Um, so it's not necessarily a time thing. It's a, how do we do this? Like there's things that I never have considered in my life that all of a sudden I'm like, Oh yeah, we need that. And I didn't know we needed that. And, um, I don't understand that. And I'm like, on this learning curve of figuring it out because when we booked the women's division, getting to know the girls and bringing them in and discovering who they are and who they are in the ring and figuring out their back that I've been doing for a long time. Like I, you know, you get to know people when you work with them, but knowing how to book a building, forget it. I am like so confused on like how to do it. And then there's just things that happen and I'll, I'll tell this story who it's fine. So I thought I had a building book. I like, and then come to find out this was not the guy that I needed to be talking to. The other guy had the full schedule. So I'm like, you, you what? You don't have that. <laughs> it's like, so I'm calling around to be able to figure this out. And it, that is a learning curve for me. Um, I, I would much rather like just be with the talent, but this is, you know, this is what you do when you, um, so that's the part I find incredibly difficult. Um, yeah, that's, well, that's the hard part for me. <laughs> well, one of the things that was interesting too, um, is that your, 
Ring of Honor Women's Division, the, the what's known as the Maria Canellis Division, uh, in that time period, really took place during the pandemic, mm-hmm. and uh, where you, you know, as far as dealing with um, venues and and fans and all of that, um, really wasn't all that much of a concern at all, right? And so, uh, so. Tell me about that transition that, you know, all of a sudden, I mean, you weren't really on that side of it anyway. You're more so just dealing with the the talent and dealing with um, what happens with the talent on screen. But uh, the talent didn't necessarily have to navigate the fans at that point. Whereas now, you know, you guys are bringing people into the buildings. You guys are booking these venues. And now there's a little bit more to it. Um, talk to me a little bit about the difference between the two. So, um <sighs> Last year, when we would have fans opposed to not having fans, it always felt like a boost. You know, it was like we would have the TV tapings, wouldn't have fans in the audience, but then we would get to a big pay-per-view and we would have fans and it felt like this boost. Now, because it's the day-to-day, it's more challenging. Plus, now we're booking it, um, that side as well. So, um you know, that's, that's really like the only, um, the only downside, I think, um, of having fans back and having to book the venues because having fans in the building is, it's a huge thing. It changes the feel. It, it motivates you to go out there. And like, if you have a good crowd, it doesn't matter how big the crowd is. Like our crowd at, uh, when we were in Providence, like, they were so passionate that everybody wanted to go out there and do their best. And I see, I seen one of the best matches I've ever seen out of Trish and Swole that, I mean, it was incredible. And it was that feeling in the arena. They wanted to go out there and have that. They wanted to have that match for the fans. And um, another one is Miranda and Lainey. I mean, they went out there and I would put that match up against any match because they were just so like the fans were passionate and they were passionate. It was a feeling in the building. So I love having the fans back. I just have to figure out booking buildings. And it's a little, um, you know, we did some stuff with the, especially with the women's tournament and running that and filming that in an empty building in Baltimore as part of the ring of our TV tapings last summer. Um, there was some stuff booking wise that we were able to do that we may not have been able to do if we did it in front of fans. And a perfect example is uh, the climb and the journey that Roxy took towards the, you know, eventually winning the championship at Death Before Dishonor. Um, in the second round, her opponent was Quinn McKay, who is extremely, extremely popular. And of course, we were trying to get the Ring of Honor fan base familiar with and, and uh, with Roxy and perfect baby face, you know, 19-year-old kid, sweet smile, good kid, uh, and great in the ring, obviously. And, uh, you know, I think if we would have had her beat Quinn McKay in, uh, in front of a crowd, say, at the 2300 Arena, I think she might have got booed out the building. Yeah. Uh, but because we, you know, we knew we were filming it in front of no crowd, uh, we were able to do something. So that's another kind of thing that, you know, just a little tidbit of how you can think of things differently. And I hope we never film in front of no fans again. Um, but that, that is just one example of how things were a little bit different. Yeah, And it was very cool on the May 1st uh, debut taping to have that partnership with WWR plus uh, a part of Beyond up in the Northeast. Uh, and, and I want to go back into a little bit more about kind of the, the booking experience, not the logistic side, but the talent side. Uh, Cause I know that in an, in an interview, uh, Maria, you discussed having to control the urge to book a 50 person card. And uh, you know, while I'm, while I'm sure it wasn't easy to, you know, reel in that. Bobby's shaking his head because I literally sent him lists of like, yeah. I want this person and I want that person. And I want this, but Bobby always brings me back to earth. And like, I, I think that's, that's part of our relationship is like, it's, it's tough because you, you can see the future and like, you can see where these girls are headed and you want to get them there as quickly as possible. And so I always said, Bobby, this list and then more lists. And then finally we dwindle it down to where it needs to be. I've learned bond 
she'll send me a list of talent. She'll tell me, send me just a, a rough draft of matches she's thinking about with the talent we have booked. And it's almost like I have, okay, is it done now? Because I have to let it settle a little bit and then we can talk about it because she'll just, her, her brain works like that. Well, she'll just rapid fire stuff at me. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I have to duck and dodge and, and, uh, you know, and then, okay, now I can look at it. I can, cause I like to have things in front of me. So what I'll do is this is always a text that she'll send it to me. I'll actually print out the text on paper. Cause I like to have it physically in front of me so I can make little notes and so forth. And that's really how the process starts. But uh, yeah, she likes to go wild sometimes. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like yeah. were some of the, the biggest factors? Cause obviously you, you, you're able to showcase a great, you know, section of the wrestling scene today uh, with this debut taping. But what do you feel like were some of the factors that went into who you used to talent wise? <clears throat> so uh, I always, I look at personalities of um, different people that are on the card. Cause Bobby and I discuss this all the time. It's about the team. So if the team atmosphere is right, you're going to have the best game. It doesn't matter what sport you're playing, whether you are, if you are playing basketball or it's a wrestling locker room, if the locker room is right, you are going to push each other. Sometimes you need one person that is an outlier that makes everybody nuts. Sometimes you need somebody that is, thinks that they are the greatest wrestler of all time. So someone else can say, no, you're not. It is like this one, but they all need to get along. Like that's one thing. Yes. You can have those thoughts in your mind, but you all still have to work very hard to make great matches together. So I always think about that first and then we go down the line. Okay. So what's our main event going to be? all right, we need these names for a big main event. And um, then we also go with, okay, we need to have an undercard that we can build that can have those fantastic matches in case something like happened to Nicole and she almost didn't actually make it. We could have thrown someone else in that would have been great at having another match that was on the undercard. If we had to fill Nicole's spot, we could have thrown Maserati right into that. Um, and she would have done great because she has all the personality in the world and the talent that is almost quite there. So it's like you, you have to have an undercard that's pliable. And then you have to have like that vision of people that are really popular <laughs> online for some reason and don't necessarily show it quite yet in the ring. So that you draw in, and I'm giving away way too much stuff right now, but you're drawing in that fan base to get them talking so that you can continue building your show. So like you'll see it last year with the tournament um, when we were booking it, all those thoughts. And then of course you have to have veterans, veterans that like literally anchor the locker room um, and veterans that love to teach. So we had Holiday last year and she is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. But she's also really good in the locker room. So, yeah, that's that's kind of my thought process. Um, I'm sure Bobby has other thoughts, too. I think you summed it all up beautifully. <laughs> this is why you're such a good team. There's such great balance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you guys have had years of experience together at this point as well, considering... <laughs> Um, you know, with, with Maria having been off and on with Ring of Honor over the years. Um, and so with this kind of being the, the uh, I guess, ultimate, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, partnership between you two as far as um, getting to do this as, uh, as your own promotion. Um, I guess, talk to the world about uh, why now? Why uh why women's wrestling army is um kind of the the spot and i mean this not just for um fans but for talent as well who's looking to kind of get their their uh their shine on in front of the world i think uh i think part of the why now just overall is to come off the momentum that we had with the women's division in ring of honor in 2021 
uh, you know, I would been, I was in the Ring of Honor for 18 years, um, and there was a, at least one other occasion that I had said I wanted to be creatively involved with the women's division, um, and they went another direction. Um, and there's no doubt in my mind, and I would get uh, texts or whatever from friends in Ring of Honor saying I talked too arrogantly about how good the women's division was in 2021, but I honestly didn't give a shit. It's... I, I thought it was really that good, and it deserved to be talked about. I think it was one of the, definitely one of the top things, not only in Ring of Honor in 2021, but the top things in wrestling. Because uh, Maria and I talked in December of 2020, uh, and at that time, Jonathan Gresham was also involved in, in, you know, recommending some talent to us. And basically, I just laid it out and said, you know, we can't just hit a home run with this. We need to hit a grand slam because of the. The, just the bad reputation that the Ring of Honor women's division or women of honor, whatever you want to call it, had on it. And uh, I think we hit a grand slam. And I think all the talent hit a grand slam and we did really well. So to follow up as quickly as we could uh, to come off of that momentum and get that push uh, was one thing. And again, it goes back to what Maria was saying about talent coming to us and saying, you guys need to do something. Um, so, you know, women's wrestling – is getting more of a focus. You know, it's main eventing dynamite. It's main eventing rampage. It's, you know, it's um, women's wrestling is getting finally some of the credit it deserves and some of the spotlight it deserves. And we're just trying to provide that on our, our, uh, our own thing, basically, you know, with the women that we knew from last year in ring of honor, or just had known over the years working uh, different events and so forth for different companies. Um, I think it's a really, it's a really, really good time to strike um, for all of those reasons. And, um, you know, I, I just, we, you know, we've talked to, I talked to Thunder Rosa. We've talked to, you know, we just had the Impact champion, Tasha Steels, against the AAA Reina de Arenas champion, uh, Taya, um, you know, main event, our second episode. And, you know, we, like I said, we talked to Thunder Rosa, talked to Thunder about the Mission Pro title being defended on a, a Women's Wrestling Army episode. She said, absolutely, just let me know when and so forth. So, you know, we, we are trying to do everything we can the right way, work with everyone we can. Um, we had a title defended by Kayla Sparks at, on the May 1st taping that I had never even heard of before. Um, yeah. but Maria, Maria had set that up, and, and I looked at it. I said, okay, it's a real title. Let's, let's absolutely do it. So, um, you know, everything's on the table with us right now. Mm-hmm. And I think another thing that makes WWA so unique as far as being an outlet for different opportunities is the idea of the profit sharing element for talent. Is there anything that you can you know, share with viewers at home ab about what that means as far as you know, for the talent involved? Bobby, do you want to go or do you want me to? I'm better at explaining. I let her explain this to all the talent. We have the talent calls. <laughs> so for, for us and for our relationship with Brand Army, um, we have a relationship with them that is a percentage relationship. And um, Brand Army collects their percent, and then we collect a percent after that. And then, of course, you know, there's things that need to be taken care of along the way. But we have allotted 20% to go to the to our actual wrestlers, and um, it means whatever we are able to build to is what we can accomplish and give back to the wrestlers. And I think um, I, I am a person that I like to be very honest. We don't have another model for this. So we don't know what number wise that's going to look like. Um, do I wish I had that? Sure. And maybe in a year I'll have, you know, what that's going to look like. Um, but it doesn't matter where we take our product. We are going to take that idea with us. So, um, if this were to end up on Apple TV, we'll just say an example that fantasy land, we would still give that profit sharing back to them too, because, um, those bumps that the girls take, they take those bumps with them, no matter where they go in life, uh, 10 years from now, they're still feeling a bump that they took, you know, the 10 years prior in Bufu, Kentucky in a crappy ring. And they'll talk about that, how that was the day that their neck started hurting. And I think that when doing our show, um, that they should be able to collect on this moving forward. And um, so that's why we say no matter where we go, we're going to continue the profit sharing because we don't know what this can build to. Um, 
cross our fingers. Um, but we want to bring that idea with us. Um, you know, we're a small company. Uh, we're just getting started. We're still trying to figure things out. But at the same time, that's one thing we have control of is to say we are going to keep this aside for the talent. I think it's so really I special. That, yeah. And, and <laughs> it, at th a thousand percent it does because not only are subscribers, you know, getting exclusive behind the scenes features and getting these these matches, but they're able to really show support for the talent that's involved, which I think is is really special about WWE. I, I totally and agree. The, and I, f I feel like that's to me, I feel like that's a big draw. Um, and that was what was kind of going in my question before is I feel like that's a big draw, not just for fans who want to support um, the talent involved, but that's a big draw for talent as well. And wanting to make sure that they're showcased in the best way possible and getting uh, the ability to um, to make as much off of the work they're putting in as possible. And I think that's an amazing thing. Yeah, and um, we're hoping that, and I feel like we have so far on the platform itself, on womenswrestlingarmy.com, we continue to put out photos and we continue to put out behind the scenes content and exclusive interviews and what's the dish with Lish and um, you know, all these different things that we can add to that give you a little bit more of a background on the wrestlers and the commentators and you know whoever else is involved. Um, so that you feel a little bit closer to them and you can you can get drawn into it um, quicker. So we have all of that. There's also going to be a documentary that's coming out later this month. Um, really excited about, I think it's later this month. It might be the beginning of this month, but it's coming out um, very soon. And the documentary is going to be very similar to the women's documentary that was about Ring of Honor. Um, and it's to give you that background of what it feels like while the the building is being put together while these uh, these matches are starting to happen while these uh, you know weird things that happen in any production <laughs> happening or the first time we actually get to see the ring aprons which was a really cool moment for bobby and i and it's shown on the documentary because it's the first time we pulled them out and we were really able to see them on a ring and go oh my gosh this is what we've been working towards is getting this look so the girls can now have a platform to go out there and to show their best work absolutely well now from the journey begins to the journey continues is there anything that you can provide us as far as what's next for women's wrestling army mm. <clears throat> bobby do you want to talk do you want me to <laughs> come on um give us a scoop here <laughs> i wish we had one uh, I wish we had a scoop. You know, I, I'm sure in your next episode we will uh, we'll have a few scoops for you. I, I will I will promise that. Um, but uh, you know, we are continuing to we're working daily on this. And again, some of this our biggest headaches are the logistics stuff that we're just not used to dealing with. Um, yeah. And I've already you know my schedule I've already adjusted my schedule. I have to set aside more time to do the stuff I need to do for women's wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, so. You know, it's, it's a learning process basically every single day. Uh, but I can say that we were going to continue to do like we did in Ring of Honor in 2021 and like we did with the first taping of the Army. We're going to do the best we can for mm -hmm. the talent, for the fans, uh, and uh, for the whole platform of women's wrestling. I think Maria's mentioned a couple times that people have reached out to her and said, you know, kind of what is this, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's another thing we need to really get across. You know, people have asked, Customs or whatever. No, this is not. This is a women wrestling promotion with some of the top women's wrestlers in the world, with actual matches, with storyline stuff. Like Maria said, we have the behind the scenes stuff, the interviews, all the all of that. So I think when people realize this is an all women's professional wrestling promotion, and um, you know they can see it for, for I think a very respectable price right now, and see everything for the eight bucks a month. Um, I think it's really cool. We weren't looking to you know, put anyone out of business financially. Um, I think it's a really good thing. It's just, it's a 